Good evening, everybody. We're gonna do some work. Still trying to figure out what went wrong with the audio last time, but hopefully we'll figure that out. See how it does this time. Sorry about the lag. Whenever I move it, because I'm trying to uh, get this at the right resolution, so you can see the detail of what I'm doing, it's going to lag a little bit. So, on this painting, which is going to be in book two, um, well, everything you're seeing right now pretty much is going to be in book two. I don't think that uh, outside of the Frankenstein time lapse that I did uh, in uh, acrylic, everything you see is going to be for book two. Uh, but this is one of those those images I've been putting off. I've got a huge, that big, but a pretty big section of it that's not painted, and uh, I just I really need to get it done. I really need to tackle it. And it's uh, the arm that's right here, and it's actually it's it's not the hardest uh, part of the painting. I that's what I've been stuck on. I've been doing all of the hard parts of the painting, which is to say, the anatomy on the figures and all of that kind of thing. And I think the problem is is that I'm trying to solve those little problems, those smaller things um, first, before I um, solve the bigger picture, and that's why they don't look right. I just got a little bit of uh, target fixation going on on that thing. So it's um, important at this point anyway to start putting in big washes. So that's what I'm going to do.
So I've got this character, I've got that character right there. That's below. I gotta make sure that they fit in the way that I need them to. And I've got this issue right now with I've got a highlight there, and the logical thing to do with that highlight is if I clear up my desktop, that's a lot of clutter for me. I've got this uh, light area right here on this figure. Natural thing to do would be to put a dark area back here to make that come forward, but then I've got this other dark area up here that I just shoved back my brush into. Um, that I don't want that to be um, receding as a result of that. Plus, I have this idea for putting a moon back down. I'm going to go with that, but we'll see. Um, so, yeah, there's a couple of things I have to solve, and none of them are going to be. Uh, solvable by just going into this stuff you know ever so slightly with the brush so I'm gonna try to figure out how I can fix this and uh, just start kind of knocking out more of this this uh, pain so hang on a second be right back try to make our way back here okay there we go all right well I think the dishwasher was clean but I need to grab myself a plate I want to put a moon into this piece. So let me see if I can do that. Move this up so you guys can get a better look at what I'm up to right here. Is that any better? I don't think so. <laughs> Sorry about that. I need to take you guys on a little ride there. So let's take a look and see where this moon can fit. Nothing against it, but I'm not trying to promote this particular brand of plate. So, um, don't worry if you don't have this exact one. So, let's take a look here. Okay, so I've got this. See, I don't want there to be a tangent in some of these areas um, where the line is just going to be off. I'm going to make sure I get the height right. I guess I can figure out the rest of it once I get this inside. Let's try it. Let's see if it's in the wrong place. Okay. That's not too bad. It's alright. Okay. So let's see if we can zoom out just a little bit. Oh, there we go. That's nice. I can hide behind that. Perfect. That's exactly what I want to do. So let me see. This is the important part anyway. So let's see here. It looks like it's lined up for you guys to be able to see. Okay, so it looks like I was planning on having some trees going back there and a couple of things. Um, and then as well as this character's arm. But right now, what I think this piece needs and has been missing is, um, is a wash is a moon uh, back behind it. I love putting these big circles uh, behind everything. Love a giant moon, a giant planet, um, or even, I, I blame Alphonse Mucha for that. I just love Art Nouveau. I love Alphonse Mucha's work. I think it's so great. Um, so that's whose fault it is, ultimately. So I'm just going to throw him under the bus. So when I'm working on this, the thing that, that Always thinking about is trying, and I did a much better job of it with my other painting, but try to get the uh, first 80% of the work done in the first 20% of the time. I say that all the time. It's one of the mantras that I have when I'm teaching, and one of those mantras that I don't always stick by, and then I get uh, <laughs> I get smacked for it uh, when I'm working on a piece and it just gets stuck. Because uh, I, I start seeing all the details. I was really interested in doing this piece uh, as a tribute to people like Rick Baker, uh, to an amazing movie, Canadian independent horror movie called Ginger Snaps. And I was I, I wanted to do a piece that that kind of um, was a, a you know a, a love letter, a thank you uh, to those works that I really really enjoyed. And so I started detailing looking at special effects artists and I'm like, oh, this stuff is so cool. And I want to, let's see if I can move this. 
I got into the the trap of detailing. Is that back here? There we go. That trap of detailing the work. Spilled a little bit of wash there though. Oh well, comes right off. Um, <laughs> I got into the the trap of detailing, looking at special effects artists, and thinking, oh, that's what it's got to be. So, what it didn't do is do something like this to get rid of the white. And unfortunately, um, I lost one of my big brushes when I was uh, at work before vacation. I have no idea where I put it. Um, and for all I know, I probably loaned it to somebody, to be honest, um, which is fine. I hope that's where it is, um, because I'd rather someone be using it. Um, but it's, uh, so I'm having to use a brush that's a little smaller than I typically use, but that's okay. If you know how to put down a wash, it doesn't really matter as much. It's just a little bit of a pain because it takes a lot more, um, a lot more passes because the bigger a brush is, the more water it can hold and the more paint it could hold. So I'm having to use a small brush to do a bigger job. It's, you know, like using this brush to paint a wall. And you wouldn't want to do that. You'd want to have a, uh, you'd want to have a bigger brush, but what it's going to do is, um, this, uh, moon that I was planning on having there, because we've got some werewolves and werecats or whatever they are, um, in this painting. And I wanted to make sure that I had a moon in there and it makes total sense, but it's, uh, it's also a visual element that locks the piece together. So I had all of this weight on one side of the frame. You can see, I always try to rotate uh, the paper or the canvas or whatever it is so that uh, I can move in the direction my wrist naturally wants to move in. And let's see if I can stop. And that way, by having my wrist and the brush out, the chances of me going outside of that circle and overcorrecting are very, very low because my brush and my hand can only reach so far because the brush is sort of at the outer arc of what my hand can do. And that's a really good bit of advice for anybody who's trying to work inside of a circle or work inside of an element and they want their borders to be good. Just don't, don't give yourself so much hand and so much brush to go outside of that. Limit yourself. Sort of view uh, how you position your hand is kind of like a leash and uh, your hand can only go so far. Um, just sort of like a pet that's uh, on a leash. They can only go so far and you know in what direction they can go and it's going to be in a circle. It's going to be in an ellipse. And the same thing is true with your hand. You know that if you plant it towards the center of the circle and it can only extend so far, you're not going to have a problem. We're not going to have as much of a problem. Let's see. Let's move this. I used some black ink, some black magic ink that uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Will Pottle, of actually suggested for me. It's called Black Magic Ink, and Will is a stand-up comic. Uh, he's a comic book artist just, and a former student one. Really, um, really has some great advice and uh, beautiful brushwork. And so when he uh, suggested this uh, Higgins Black Magic Ink, um, I tried it out. He was kind enough to actually let me uh, try it um, out when he uh, came for a visit and was showing me some pages he was working on. And I just fell in love with the stuff. It's great. It's waterproof. It's matte. So, uh, and you can wash gouache over it. It's not <laughs> wash gouache. You can wash gouache over it um, because it um, doesn't coat the paper as much as a really thick acrylic ink. I like how dark those inks can get, but they also are water resistant. Whereas this is really, really dark, but it's almost matte. You have to work really hard to um, make it thick and cake it up like some of the um, inks that I'm used to using. Speedball and uh, that kind of stuff. That's more of what I would use. Um, gosh, let me think. 
actually, I don't know. I might even use that more on an acrylic painting if I'm doing an underdrawing, but I'm not sure. I mean, at this point, Black Magic is uh, just doing it for me. It's just, it's a little, um, it's a little more pricey, um, and sometimes it's hard to come by. But this is, uh, that's what you're seeing when you see right down in here, when you're seeing some of these darks. Those are the Black Magic ink. That's what you're seeing. Let's see here. I'll finish that out, I guess. And I don't worry about it uh, going over the elements that I've already put down because uh, the elements I've already put down are, um, it'll make them darker if they need to be, or it'll, it'll tie the whole piece in together. And if um, I don't, um, if I keep everything from touching when I'm working, um, it, it just, it never serves the painting. It never serves the piece. Like right now you have this character's uh, hair, which I know to be light, but it's, it shouldn't be lighter than the moonlight because the moon is creating light. And so there's no way that that should be the case. And so those are the times when you kind of have to be, you know, a little bit more, um, a little bit more bold with what you're doing. And let's see if I can find a color I like. Be a little bit more bold in what you're doing and don't be afraid to say, okay, I know that's white hair, but that's white hair that's in a silhouette and it needs to be darker than the moonlight. So while the local color might be white, um, the effect it has to have is that this is in front of the moon. And once I do that, even though it's just a subtle shift, I think it would need to be darker than even that. Notice how that whole thing now comes in front of the moon so you can start to see. Actually, I'm going to get rid of my flakes here <laughs> so I can show you guys more of what we're doing here. So this right here, this character, this figure, and the moon right there, is being silhouetted by that moon. And then the same thing is true for this character that's kind of in front of it. I might have some clouds going over there, I'm not quite sure. But this is the overall uh, look of the piece right there. That's what we're after, is to kind of create that silhouette. And so that's what I'm gonna be doing as I work on this, is just trying to build that, that up a bit, try to build up that quality of it. I don't know if it's going to be that bright yellow, to be honest, um, but it might be. It might be. Maybe I, I like to put a little bit of green and I put blue in everything, so it might very well be uh, more blue when I'm done, but we'll see. For now, I just don't want it to be, um, you know, neon yet in terms of um, how bright it is. And right there, it just got a little too bright, so I'm just going to add some white into it and make it more chalky. Um, and then I can start fooling around with... Uh, more of that. So that's going to be, oh, that actually helps a lot. Helps me to plan out the rest of the piece. It's always amazing how that works. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put, put myself back out there for a second. Oh boy, I'm going to do this. Really? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Well, we'll try it this way. Oh, there we go. This right here is the piece. This is the overall. And that moon anchors that weight so I can work across it and put this character um, into some kind of context. And that starts making me picture all kinds of things. I'm picturing things like, oh, I'll have some tree branches go in front of it. I'll have some uh, clouds. I'll have some mist. But I couldn't see any of that stuff until I put that moon in there. It's just one of the weird things about how we work as artists. So I put this over here to dry for a bit. Um, and yeah, there's... Uh, there's good old uh, Frankenstein here. And take a look at Frankenstein. Oh yeah, Godzilla. There we go. There's some Godzilla. Let's see, it's so strange. Let's see here. So I'm gonna turn this camera up a little bit. Oh, let me get that lag. Um, so that it's a little easier to see this piece. And see, this is the problem. And I trust him, but my son, <laughs> I just can't work this way. My my son tells me, "Oh, you got to put your your face on that side of it when you're a YouTuber." And I'm like, "I know, I, I hear you, bud, but I can't. I'm this eye is not very strong, and that's the eye <laughs> the eye that I'm on, and I want to see out of my good eye." I just realized how hard that is. <laughs> my my dominant eye can't see the artwork, so that's a bit of a problem. 
love our kid, and he gives me really good advice uh, because he knows a lot more about this stuff than I do. And uh, yeah, that's what we're working on. So there's another example of a piece that I'm working on right now. Uh, you can see the so I'm getting a reflection on there. But you can see how, you know, the detail of this work is, you know, so um, meticulous on some of these images. And then same thing goes with, let's see, I got some blue on there that I'm doing with. Uh, this one, which is the Frankenstein piece that I'm working on. There we go. And we see how this one, have to see how this one comes out. Well, that looks so much better on, uh, camera than it did on the one when I was working on it. So learning all kinds of things as I go here. Um, let's see what we got here. So we got this one, we got that one. And so we got I gotta get rid of this. This is driving me crazy. There we go. Let's see what we got. I'm dying to see how loud this is. I know you're probably not, but I'm dying to see how loud it is because I can't stand the silence. It's just deafening. So let me see here. Here's my song. Let's get back to this. Let's see, I need to account for my um, yeah, the massive display. I need to count there's a way to do this. Let's try this. <laughs> this, this laptop's gonna hang around. It's gonna be really funny for like three seconds. All right. Let's see how it works. Let's take that. I'm gonna drop this volume down. There we go. It's probably incredibly loud anyway. Um, that's what I learned last week. So now I'm gonna take this, move this out of my way, and see if I can see things any better. Yeah, it's a little better. It's a little further away. There we go. That'll do. Alright, so now I gotta just figure out what I need to do to make this work. Let's work on my hand. Let's see if this is drying up yet. Still a little damp. Let's take a look and see how I can level this out. Let's see. I need this to dry just a little bit more. Let's go back to this here. <laughs> Did I just get a message of some kind? I don't know what that was. I do not understand how my computer works, but if you sent me a message, awesome. Um, let me see here. <laughs> I'm just too dumb to figure out where it went. So let me see here. Got that. Got that. Okay, got that makes some kind of sense. Alright, cool. So got this. 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 So let's get to work here on this one. Wrap this one up. It's almost done anyway. Yeah, there we go. So I got that eye figured out the other day, and I think that's working really well. And I've got her sleeping. Um, as the vampire creeps up, I'm still gonna figure out that text, and I think I need to put some more darks in there, particularly right here in the bottom of the frame, because it's just breaking a little too much. So I'll do that. That sounds like it'll be fun. Let's see.
Yeah, I'm streaming, bud. What's up? Did you grab something? Yeah. Okay, grab some water, buddy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Good night, kiddo. Love you. There we go. Now we got a nice edge on that panel border right there. I mean, that's ultimately, I mean, that's the thing. If I grab my reference over there, I gotta stop taking, <laughs> I gotta stop taking my, uh, my uh, artwork away when I do that. But you can see some of the reference that I'm using. Uh, it's off the side uh, right here. And uh, I'm having to look at the reference, but then remember things like I want that panel to be framed, or that panel, that page, micro page that's got a series of panels on it to be framed by the darks right there. So I can't just think about this figure, this uh, Nosferatu vampire figure in isolation. It just doesn't work. Um, the whole piece won't, won't hold up very well. So I'm always kind of rotating things around and watching the camera lag. I'm always rotating things around and trying to figure out how to make them work better. And that right there just pushed that frame forward, which is great. Now, if I wanted to recede, I can always do that, but I can't have the audience and the viewer confused as to what the heck they're supposed to be looking at. Hold on one second. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> this is perfect. There we are. All right, we're going to finish the stream for now. Sorry about that before, guys. Um, my, uh, <laughs> my family did not know I was streaming, so they had some questions for me. Um, and there's a lot going on, a lot to prep for for tomorrow because the kids are going to be back at school. My wife is going to be back teaching her high school students. If any of you guys are watching, um, hello to uh, Mrs. and uh high school art students. Um, and so yeah, so I'm back. And actually I had the time to come up with a better camera setup. So I'm going to try this out for a little bit. It's the only reason I'm back. Completely wiped out. I will probably uh, be passing out in a little bit. But until then, I wanted to test out the camera and test out this uh, streaming situation um, and see how it goes. And that light is probably not going to do us any good, is it? So let me move the light back and see how that does. And we'll move that out there. So then, if the value is okay, um, it's a little bright.
drag my face that way. Um, let's see. Yeah, that looks okay. What's wrong? I'm going to have to pull some more highlights out of that hair tomorrow. But I think it's looking good. I think it's starting to come together. So I would love to go on and do some more streaming with you guys. Uh, but I just wanted to wrap up and uh, check in and see uh, everybody know. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sorry for having to walk off. But when your family needs you, your family needs you. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot more streaming to show this process and I think I'm just starting to get a handle on where I want to put the camera and all the other stuff um, what time works best 
so we'll go from there. I should have some more to show you guys soon. But thanks for your patience with all this as I start to figure this out. Um, and thanks for checking out the work. That's the biggest thing. So take care, everybody. Have a good evening. I am going to be passing out soon. Take care. Bye.